beautiful brunch bites, almost too pretty to eat in San Carlos. It was easily the best waffle I've ever had. Traditional Colombian empanadas in San Jose. The crust, it is so delicious. And delicate soup dumplings in Union City. Oh my gosh, I fell in love with the dumplings. So good. You weren't joking, it's spicy. You gotta try this. Check Please You Gotta Try This is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. It's believing race should never be a health risk and investing in research to make it so. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Total Wine and More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine and More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area's new spin-off, You Gotta Try This. We have three guests and each one recommends the one dish they can't get enough of. And the other two go check them out to see what they think. Along the way, we take a deep dive into the stories behind those dishes, learning the special ingredients and techniques that make them so delicious. Joining me virtually at the Check Please table today for a special teen edition are Caitlin, Amelie, and Richard. Thank you. Thank are you, you excited to be here? Yes. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Caitlin's dish starts us off. It's a rose and strawberry waffle with toppings fresh from the owner's family garden. It's just one of the many colorful creations at a chic little cafe in San Carlos called Mints and Honey. Our cafe name is Mints and Honey. We want to create this gathering space that not only kids, but the parents and everyone can like and feel like home. So my sister and I started a floral design company um, in 2005, and it was doing great. Unfortunately, in 2009, uh, we find out she has a brain tumor, and at the time, we need to do the surgery right away. Um, so we have to put the business aside for, um, until she's better. Then a few years later, things got better and we started to talk about we want to start something new. And at the time, we have kids and we thought, why don't we have a party space, but also a cafe, because we like to make pretty things. You know, when we do weddings, when we do events, you know, when we do the dessert table, and that is the experience we want to bring to our customers. The first thing for me is how the color is going to come out, like in drink. Yeah, and even the food too. How are we going to mix the match? The color mixture is healthy, but also the colors, is it going to turn out nice? Like, you know, when we do the flower arrangement. Can it be an Instagram picture, right? <laughs> yeah. I love rose jam. So I was just trying to think, okay, how can I put this on with the waffle? <laughs> so the rose strawberry waffle consists of a grits yogurt, strawberry, rose jam, lemon zest, and honey. And with the rose jam, it's pretty simple. It's just like how you make a strawberry jam at home. I think what makes it special is actually we make it from the wheel paddles. And having be able to find the paddles um, and the right color and the right taste, that's the key. Just boil the water, you know, and put in your paddle, simmer for 20 minutes, and start to put in sugar and real lemon juice. And that is the time you can see the color change. And then put in patin. When she's steaming, um, you can really smell the rose, yeah. like the it's like fragrance in the fragrance in the whole kitchen. Yeah. And I think that's the that's yeah. the best experience we have. It's like you know when you make it, it smells so it's good. So it's so almost good. you have to perfume in like in your house, yeah. right? But it's natural. <laughs> we really want to show to our customer that you know we care. You know we actually handcraft everything. This is the little details we put in because we're making something special for you. 
And I think that's the idea we have is somewhere you can just go enjoy the food and enjoy your time with each other. Especially after the brain tumor and the surgery, I think this is a big thing to us and being able to support each other and spend time, you know, this is something very precious. So Caitlin, this is such a beautiful spot and the food is so pretty. Tell me how you found that dish that you love so much. Uh, one time I was with my friend and we decided to get breakfast one morning and I wanted to like go beyond what I'm usually used to trying. So I was like, okay, wow, this looks so good. Well, I didn't know you could eat roses. Yeah. <laughs> so when you take a bite of it, all the sweet flavors from the strawberries and the rose jam contrast with the bitterness of the Greek yogurt. And that's like one of the things I really like. And the waffles themselves are super fluffy, which I think all like comes together very well. So Richard, did you like the dish as well? Oh my gosh, it was so good. The waffle was nice and fluffy and crisp on the outside and everything just balanced together very nicely. The honey and the rose jam complemented the strawberry and also the Greek yogurt gave it a little bit of nice bitterness, but it's not too bitter. It was sweet and it was absolutely amazing. Well, I have to go to Amelie next because she's been shaking her head and saying, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It was easily the best waffle I've ever had. And I can't wait to go back because it was just so good. And I don't usually like Greek yogurt, but oh, I wow. really liked how it went with the rose jam and also the edible flowers on top. Yeah, my friend was yeah. like, are you actually going to eat the flower? I'm like, yeah, they're edible and they're actually like pretty good. Yeah, I was surprised <laughs> to enjoy those. <laughs> Gives it nice texture. Mm. Another dish I really like is the hummus, cucumber, avocado toast. And actually, it's the place that got me to like avocados because I never used to like avocados before until I tried this toast from Mints and Honey. It's just so good. In terms of drinks, I love to get this coconut mango drink and I usually add boba into it. And it's just so yummy because you can really taste all the like coconut and the mango flavors. That's Richard, favorite. what about you? Yeah, so I got the uh, avocado toast and it was like one of the best avocado toasts I've actually ever had. The crust of the bread was nice and crunchy and the avocado was nice and fresh and cool. And um, I also got the butterfly coconut mango drink too. And it was so good. The closest thing I can compare it to is like having a day on the beach. It's nice and refreshing and the coconut gives it a little bit calmness and it even looks like a sunset on a beach too. It's orange, white, and then blue. And you know, this place is such a pretty spot, isn't it? It was so cute. It was such a surprise when we pulled up because I was like, oh my gosh, I love the way it looks and the atmosphere was super fun. Um, we actually ended up sitting outside in the back. They were really nice like back area with cute like colored chairs and tables and it was really fun. Is this a, a dish that you would go back to try? Do you crave this dish now that you've eaten it once? Yes, definitely. Definitely. That's yeah. my favorite ever. <laughs> so Caitlin, I understand also that you're a baker. So does that help you decide whether you like a dish or not? Because, oh, is this something I would make or something I wouldn't make? Yeah, well, I'd say like I have a really, really sweet tooth. So I tend to usually go for the sweeter items on the menu. And I definitely really kind of find the flavors in the dish because I'm doing that when I like add in different flavors in my desserts. And do you have a specialty? Um, I'm probably like, I make a lot of cake and cupcakes. So I'd say my chocolate cake is really good. Uh, my family loves it. <laughs> Amelie and Richard, would you like to try her chocolate cake? Absolutely. <laughs> Send it over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. If you would like to try the rose and strawberry waffle at Mints and Honey, it's located on El Camino Real in San Carlos. And Caitlin's pro tip, get the coconut mango drink on the side. Amelie's dish is a savory and hearty beef empanada. It's just one of a huge variety of Colombian pastries made fresh daily at her San Jose spot, Milojas. We come from Bogota, Colombia, <laughs> South America, and we have been here for 16 years now. Empanadas are very popular in Colombia. We have them um, as street food, delicious finger food, and it's great at any time of the day. You mostly will find the fried version in the street stands, but we actually do the baked ones. That's what my grandmother used to make, and we think they're more versatile. 
Like you can have them in the morning with like a cup of coffee or hot chocolate for your breakfast. You can even have it on the go. Or you can actually have it with the side salad or a soup or something as a more substantial meal. Mil hojas is a word that means a thousand layers. Mil hojas, and it resembles the consistency of our dough. Everything is by hand. Every day, everything is fresh and natural. So these ladies in the back since 3 a.m. in the morning till we close at 7, it's, it's a lot of work the whole day long. On average, we produce about 600 per day. What? Beef. My dad was the person who inherited those recipes from my grandmother. He's very meticulous. He's an architect by training, so it's all like almost with a ruler if he could. But you know, he, he weighs everything out and he makes sure that he's always sticking to the process because consistency is key. Ahora voy a hacer una bola de masa, pero primero voy a sacar la mantequilla. My husband, he really loves what he does. And he, every day I say, don't go so early. We don't have to, to get up so early. Say, no, I have to be there. They need me. I have to be there. He's also very protective of the family recipe. I think a lot of people make the assumption that it's my mom cooking. Yeah, everybody <laughs> congratulates me. Oh, your recipe is good. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not the one. It's my <laughs> husband. So for the beef empanada, it's a process that takes several hours because we have to make the filling. When you make the dough and you have to roll it out, you have to put the butter on it. After that, you fold it in a certain pattern and then that needs to chill in the fridge for about 10 minutes. And we repeat this process four times for each batch of dough that we make. So a lot of layers of butter that go into making the crust flaky and delicious. One day, huh? Every day for seven years in a row, he eats a chicken empanada every day at the same time. <laughs> at 10.30 in the morning, he said, oh, my empanada. I don't think there is a right or wrong way to eat empanada. I cut it in half and then I, you know, pour the sauce inside, I eat it with my hands. A lot of people just dig in with their hands, you know, and some people just like to not... Some people just buy and a little bit of... clean, so just fork and knife and, and that's perfectly yeah. acceptable as long as you're enjoying it. <laughs> now, Amelie, this looks like a big, hearty, wonderful thing to eat. How did you peg it as your favorite? Why do you like it so much? Uh, my dad is Colombian, so that's why we had originally discovered it. It was great to find Colombian food near us, and it is just so amazing. And milojas means a thousand layers, so you get that with the pastry crust. Tell us about the crust. So when you bite down, you get the thousand layers, like in the name, um, and it's just a really flaky pastry, and it's always baked to perfection. It's always golden brown, and it's wonderfully crisp on the outside. Even if it didn't have filling, I would still eat just the pastry because I love it so much. <laughs> and Caitlin, let me ask you, since you're a baker, what did you think of the dish? I love empanadas. So this was like such a good dish. Like when I saw that we had to try this, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I love empanadas. The crust, like Amelie said, it is so delicious. I especially like love the little corners of it because like mm -hmm. you get like a big kind of chunk of crust. And it was so good. And especially the flavors within the beef are so good and it's so tender. And you can just really, really, really taste all the flavors that come through. And Richard, I'm seeing a smile on your face. Yeah, so the crust of the uh, empanada was amazing. It was crunchy and then inside the beef was nice and tender and it was juicy too. So there is a special sauce that you have to get. Is that true, Amelie? Absolutely. It's called an ahi sauce and it has lots of cilantro and onions and chili peppers. Lots of chili peppers and it's amazing. You have to get it. <laughs> Our special sauce is called ahi and ahi is also the name for chili peppers in Colombia. The one that we have here is on the milder side. The secret is basically a lot of cilantro, a lot of onion and the chili peppers. But it is interesting because even though I have the recipe, and I've seen it be made my entire life. I can never replicate it. Oh, people love the sauce. They want more and more. They say, can you add more? Okay, okay. no, a little bit more. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's good. Really, it's really good. <laughs> so Amelie, talk a little bit about what else they make there. 
when you walk in, there's just, it's mostly empanadas and there's a wide variety of the types of empanadas you can get. There's chicken, there's potato. I think there's like a pizza one and they're all great. Um, and for dessert, what my family gets every time is the guava fingers. You have the same like flaky pastry and then inside there's obviously guava and it's so sweet and it's like this big, but it's amazing and it fills me up every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you would like to try the beef empanada at Milojas, it's on Meridian Avenue in San Jose. And Amelie's pro tip, be sure to top the beef empanada with plenty of ahi sauce. Ever since he tasted traditional handmade soup dumplings in Shanghai, Richard's been on the hunt for the best version he can find here at home. He and his family think they've come incredibly close with the Xiaolong Bao at Union City's Ding Ding Dumpling House. I grew up in a family, you know, my parents make delicious food, and the dumplings is my favorite. That's the main reason I want to open up the dumpling business myself. For our family, we all have the passion to make dumplings. In our menu, there is the Xiaolong Bao. The Xiaolong Bao got two flavors, the original flavor and the craft flavor. And then we got uh, the veggie dumpling. We have fish dumpling. We have the shrimp and pork dumpling. And then we have the popsicle. And all those dumplings looks different. So for the XLB, or Xiaolong Bao, so called soup dumplings. So that means uh, the little basket bun. So that was first introduced in Shanghai back in 19th centuries. So Ding Ding style, we make our dumplings focus on the details. And uh, all the dumplings on our menu are handmade only. From outside, it might look simple, but for the taste itself, the simpler the thing is, it's the most difficult thing to make, you know. We take about like a three to six months to learn how to roll the wrap and the six to one year to do how to make the dumpling. My mom teaches me how to do this. My mother is, you know, make much better than me. <laughs> For the wrap, we make a thinner outside than the inside. Yeah, it has a ground pork meat and the gelatin, also the onion inside. We leave one part of each and punch it all together. 18 to 20 folds, and then at the end, we seal the dumpling. I really love to do, you know, a dim sum like that, or, you know, all the dumplings. I don't know why, but I just love it. I, maybe I'm, you know, I'm a big eater. <laughs> we go through about 300 orders, Xiaolong Baos, for every single day. Sometimes, in a weekend, it's about like four or five hundred. At first, when I saw people that never have an experience on the Xiaolong Baos, I saw them like pour the soup out of a dumpling. I know they are quite surprised. And then I, I will tell them, you can drink the soup first and then, then eat the meat. You know, you know they're like, wow, how do you make it? I mean, that's my secret. <laughs> Richard, how did you narrow in and find the perfect Xiaolong Bao? So we used to frequent a Mexican restaurant in the same plaza and we saw that they were opening so we decided to give it a try and when we ordered the Xiaolong Bao, their signature dish, oh my gosh, I fell in love with the dumplings. It was so good. The wrapper was nice and chewy. The pork and the green onion is nice and flavorful and the soup broth inside is nice and rich. So Richard, tell me about this dish because it is very unique flavors and you have to eat it a certain way, don't you? Yes. So what I like to do is I hold it by the uh, little container they give you and I sip the soup through a straw. Mm -hmm. And you can also eat it in a oyster movement where you put it up to your mouth, you would bite a little bit of the wrapper off and then you just slurp it. And also you got to add the vinegar and ginger sauce. It gives it a little bit of kick too. What did you think about them, Amelie? 
it was definitely a surprise. I was not expecting the soup. And so I bit into it and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> but it was so good. And the soup definitely kept the inside nice and moist and soft. And the actual dumpling itself, it was really soft and a little chewy, which I actually like. So when you bit into it, it had a little bit of a pool. It was really, really good. It was a total surprise too. <laughs> I was also surprised kind of when I bit into it. Um, but I usually go for the normal pot sticker. So it was good to like venture out and try like a soup dumpling like this because I've never had anything like it before. And how authentic are these? You've been to Shanghai? Yeah, they're like virtually indistinguishable from the ones I've had in Shanghai. They really keep to the original recipe and they're very authentic. And Amelie, did you get a chance to see how these are made? I did. They have a cool little window. And so my family kind of went over and peered in just to look at it. It was really cool. Everyone in there was really focused and there was definitely a specific technique. And one of them even held up to show us, you know, how they do it. It was really cool. And is there anything else that you get uh, at Ding Ding Dumpling? I get the nice Thai iced tea, which is like a smoky sweet flavor compared to a Lapsang Shushang, which is a gun metal tea. It's supposed to taste smoky. And it's very different from the Thai iced tea you would uh, usually get at like a boba shop, but it's amazing. It's refreshing too. When I went, I didn't get anything for dessert, but I got chow mein on the side and I got their chicken fried rice and they were both really delicious. Like I love chow mein and I love fried rice. So it was really good to like kind of get an extra thing on the side just to try for fun. And it was really delicious. I brought it home to my family and they all loved it. I also got the fried rice and we got uh, shrimp dumplings as well. Those were really good. I love those. I think we ate all of them. <laughs> uh, if you want to be super adventurous, there's this um, beef tongue, which is chilled and you eat with hot chili oil. It sounds gross, but you you got to try that too because it's, it's really good. <laughs> it sounds gross, but you got to try it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, if you would like to try the Zhao Long Bao at Din Ding Dumpling House, it's located on Dakota Road in Union City. Richard's pro tip, add the ginger and vinegar dipping sauce to your dumplings for an extra kick. Now we've got even more ideas for Bay Area foods you've just got to try. Producer Cecilia Phillips is on the hunt for off-the-grid dining experiences and having a little fun along the way. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about why this area has such a big concentration of Indian food and this sort of cuisine. So Sunnyvale, there are more than 50,000 Indians. So when we started here, we were the only food truck. And we have really good terms between the owners of different food trucks and the bonding with each other. Um, so we support each other. And you basically created a little community here. Exactly, yes. So, you know, there's a saying goes in India that do your best and God will do the rest. Outside of India, people have a huge misconception that when they think about street food, they just say the chaat. Chaat is just the one segment. Chaat is from the northern part of India, but every part of India has distinguished street foods. So my particular food originated in Mumbai. So pao bhaji, pao means literally bread, and then the bhaji means curry. The big massive iron pan is called tawa, T-A-W-A. So the slow cooking and the way the iron infuses the flavor, you cannot replicate at home. And you can see the butter melted on the top. Wow. And this dish uses lots of butter. Let's have fun. Okay. And the best way to enjoy is with the hands. Mm. Wow, this is going to be messy. Mm. Mm. But you know when it's messy, that means it's really good. good. <laughs> this is the dahi batata sayapuri. These are puri shells that you put different sauces in. There is red chutney, green chutney, and yogurt. The yogurt is basically sweet. Oh, this is weighty. <laughs> this has some weight to it. All right, cheers. cheers. <laughs> That's the reason I picked the small one. Crunchy on the outside, mm. and then it's just like a burst in your mouth. So, brought up sprouted beans. That's sprouted beans over there. There's different kinds of chips, uh, uh, chickpea crisp, and pow again the Bombay bread. And there's onion and and whenever you take a first bite, you get a click, like <laughs> like coughing. <laughs> so that's the appreciation of misal pow. You should have a cough first, at okay. least first, because so if I don't cough, it's not misal pow. Oh my gosh! Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa! Wow! That is hot. <laughs> You that weren't joking, it's spicy. Yeah, it's really good. So we eat like at least five times more spicier than this. 
five times more spicy. Yeah, I'm, I'm being modest about it. it I'm good. Eight, eight or ten <laughs> times more. Oh my god! This is your bun, which is lightly roasted, and then they have topped it with raw onions, pomegranate seeds, and it's food for the souls. It hits you at the right spot, especially when you're tired on a Friday evening. <laughs> it's just perfect. My go-to dish is vada pav. It's comfort food for me. So whenever I'm feeling down or whatever, I just uh, come here, give this place a visit. Are you gonna get some food? Yeah, I'm getting chicken momos. Ah, oh, chicken momos! I was wanting to try that one. What's a momo? So it's basically like this dough which is wrapped around something inside it, and they pinch it together on the top, and basically eat it. It tastes really, really good. So let's just say you only had one spice that you could use for the rest of your life. What spice would you pick? Oh. <laughs> so Indians, we use a lot of spices, so. That's why the question's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Not really a spice, but I would choose garlic. Uh, I love garlic. It would be turmeric. It has medicinal properties, so that's why I like turmeric. Turmeric and uh, green, red chili powder. Turmeric and red chili powder, okay. What are you cooking with those? I can cook anything with those. <laughs> I would pick chili pepper. I really like cardamom, it tastes good. Delicious, I love the flavor. And it's spicy, but it's not too it's spicy. spicy. Yeah. If you want spicy, we can get too spicy also. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> well, that's our show. And I have to thank the wonderful guests on this week's show. You guys were awesome. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you next time on Check Please, You Gotta Try This. All right, come on in, guys. Woo! <laughs> Which of these dishes would you try? Follow us on Instagram or like us on Facebook and let us know what you think. Check, please, you gotta try this is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com it's believing race should never be a health risk and investing in research to make it so. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child with my grandmother doing fresh pasta and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check Please Bay Area. What is the name of this? Uh, Malai Kofi. It takes four hours to make it. It's fully organic. It's frozen in a cone shape. Then we take it out and collect extra Malai, which is what the Kofi is made of. In Bombay, when two friends meet and they say, let's go have cutting, it means chai. In Bombay, we say takkar. 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 You've got to try this. That was a great answer, and you are well on your way to becoming a movie star. Yeah. <laughs>